Hi there, it's Val again here in the City of Angels at Beverly Boulevard and Vista. And I'm about to introduce you to yet another angel here in the City of Angels. His name is Richard Walden. And he started an organization called Operation USA. And there's Richard. Hi, Richard. Hi, Valerie. How are you? <laughs> Welcome to Operation USA. We're in our 33rd year wow. of delivering essential disaster relief all over the world. We've been in 100 countries now. Oh, my gosh. And we're uh, looking for friends. <laughs> Show us These the map. These are all dots on the map. These are... And what do they each Thus, mean? Each one is a place where we've worked. Okay. And uh, the colors don't mean anything in particular, but we've, as you can see, we've pretty much worked on every continent. Wow. Uh, I just got back from uh, Japan from the earthquake and tsunami to, and then went to Thailand, um, where there's been a lot of flooding uh, over the past uh, bit of time. Yes. So we've been uh, looking at things that we can do. Okay. And uh, and then I was with you all in Sri Lanka. Take us to there were, on the map. Yes, too. we were in Sri yeah. Lanka. Yes. And in your case, yes. After we've been the in tsunami, Sri Lanka, we've been in the Philippines. Yes. We've been in Russia. Up here. Yes, you and I. Yes, we have. We've been. We were trying to do an exchange between doctors, right. which we did. Yes, That's exactly. Right. Okay. And we've been in Nicaragua and El Salvador. Yes, and Mexico, of and course. And a lot in Mexico. Yes, in, uh, way back when, in the 80s, after the big the earthquake, where I worked for over a year back and forth there, right. too, with medical supplies. So here you were. You were just sitting at the beach, and you had this idea. Right. I was I just saying, this idea. too. Yes and uh, with a friend yeah. and we picked up the phone on a lark and we called the uh, an aircraft maker McDonnell Douglas which made the DC-10s yes. and back in 1979 we asked him for an airplane and uh, he said for publicity reasons I'll let you have a cargo plane to fly to Malaysia where there were Vietnamese boat refugees offshore here near Terengganu, coming from the Delta of Vietnam, and many of them were dying at sea, mm. but we got them to help. Uh, Malaysians were helpful, and we got some American companies to contribute uh, shelter materials and water purification and medications, and there were 44,000 refugees on that island, and wow. then after we delivered it to the island off uh, Malaysia, by fishing boat, we uh, went on a tour of Thailand on the border of Laos and the border of Cambodia, where there were hundreds of thousands more refugees in 1979. We got a second airplane six weeks later, and we flew another flight. And so I was kind of hooked. And my friend wasn't as hooked as I was, so I uh, set up a, a, a little office in my law office library in Beverly <laughs> Hills with just me and another volunteer. And then a, a local real estate uh, owner gave us a free office for five years for four people. So we camped out. And then someone else gave us a free warehouse, and we kept going and going. And 32-plus years later, here's the world as it looks. Did uh, you ever think that that was going to happen, that it was turn into no, the stream? No, yeah. I couldn't have. I couldn't have. If you had told me that I would uh, reach Medicare... <laughs> Still doing this, I would have laughed at you. I, w I was the commissioner of hospitals and a civil rights lawyer in Beverly Hills. And I gave both of those up within two years of our first flight mm. and then started this uh, odyssey. <laughs> but if you like to travel, this is a good <laughs> field to be in. You have, well, you have managed to combine your passion of helping people yeah. and travel and adventure and health. It does get yeah. tough sometimes. It does get tough. Tell, tell us about that. Well, it's, um, you know, if you know you're going into a horrible situation where there have been masses of people who have been killed by natural disasters or wars, yes. um, it's not the most pleasant thing. So I tend rather to get depressed. Hmm. I don't. I get angry. Hmm. I get angry at the fact that there was a war. I get angry uh, at people weren't prepared for a disaster. 
Uh, I get angry they're not being helped enough. I get angry that there are so many scam charities that take mm. money and don't mm -hmm. do anything with mm. it. So there's a lot of things to be angry about. And then you channel that anger into action. I channel it into getting something done. Mm -hmm. And we measure our effectiveness in what we deliver. It's real simple. And tell us about that. Tell us what you deliver. Tell us about the overhead. We Is have there... an overhead that's usually 2 to 3% per year. Uh, we don't take any government money. We're, we prefer to be privately funded. Um, so we, we get out of that government contractor rat race. Um, we ask for donations of products from American companies, especially pharmaceuticals and medical supplies, uh, but also shelter materials, uh, hand crank radios that don't need batteries and battery, battery less cell phone chargers and tents, things like that. And if people made a donation, how much of their donation goes to these? It's, it's, it's at least 98 cents. And wow. sometimes if our overhead is covered by our board of directors, um, you know, it's, it's all for the program work. So, so 98% yeah. percent to 100% yeah. of your donations go yeah. here. And it, a lot of it has to do with people helping to cover the overhead, people at the other end who we trust that are overseeing shipments, and wonderful volunteers. And if you could tell people anything from this experience yeah. about having a dream or an idea mm -hmm. or making a difference, what would you say? I'd say that I'm fairly glib, but I'm still uh, an ordinary person. And if I am able to create something that could sustain for 32 years and still do good, uh, so can you. And so people can do that. If they're busy working, accumulating wealth, they can set up a foundation for themselves, their family, their company, and choose wisely among the uh, many, many options available for giving. You just have to decide what it is that you feel compelled to help. Some people are into animals. Some people are into only helping in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Some people are into a particular country because they have a history of from being from that country. Whatever the reason, it doesn't really matter as long as you get something done that's outside yourself. I and like that's, it. And one of the ways they can help is, is to donate to you that, or volunteer time. And if they want to donate, where do they go? How do they do They it? should look at our website thoroughly, mm -hmm. operationusa.org or www.opusa.org. And then once they feel they understand what we do, you can look at our financials, you can look at everything, uh, give us a call. And uh, we're here in Los Angeles on Beverly Boulevard. Mm -hmm. We're easy to find, but we prefer you looked at the website first because mm -hmm. you'll be better informed when you ask questions. I love it. Okay. Thank you for Thank being you. an angel Thank in you. the city of angels, Richard. <gasps> we'll you. see you later in the city of angels. Thank you for being an angel in the city of Thanks. angels. I'm proud to know you. Thank you. You inspire us all.